Classic Tales, Arabian Nights. The Second Calendar's Tale. The Second Calendar began his tale by explaining that he was the son of a king in a certain country. From a young age, he showed exceptional intelligence, prompting his father to invest heavily in his education. He was taught by the best teachers in history, poetry, versification, geography, and chronology, but he excelled the most in calligraphy, quickly surpassing his masters and gaining a reputation that reached distant lands. A sultan from a faraway country, intrigued by the stories of the talented young prince, sent an ambassador with rich presents and an invitation to visit his court. The calendar's father, eager to secure an alliance with a powerful monarch and to provide his son with valuable experience, agreed and sent him with a small entourage carrying 10 camels loaded with gifts. Their journey was disrupted when they encountered 50 robbers. Despite trying to negotiate, the robbers attacked. The prince managed to escape on his horse, but the ambassador and the servants were either killed or captured. After wandering for a month, he arrived at the outskirts of a beautiful city, disheveled and in a sorry state. He entered a tailor's shop and asked where he was. The tailor, sympathizing with him, provided food and lodging, but warned him to keep his identity secret, as the prince ruling the city was his father's greatest enemy. The next day, the tailor asked him about his skills, learning that none of his educated talents would be useful in a city where many couldn't read or write. The tailor introduced him to a woodcutter to learn the trade. He quickly mastered woodcutting. One day, while wandering in the forest, he discovered a trapdoor under a tree stump. He pulled up the door, descended the staircase, and found a luxurious underground palace supported by pillars of jasper and gold. A beautiful lady approached, ecstatic to see a human after 25 years of isolation. She revealed that she was a princess of a king from the Ebony Isle. On her wedding day, a genie abducted her and trapped her in this palace. The genie visited every 10 days, but she could summon him anytime by touching a talisman hanging above her chamber's door. The princess asked the calendar to stay with her until the genie's next visit in five days. Smitten by her beauty, he agreed. She offered him a bath, rich clothes, and a feast. The next day, during dinner, the calendar, emboldened by wine, insisted she break her bond with the genie and leave with him. She warned him of the danger, but he ignored her breaking the talisman. The air darkened, a fearful noise was heard, and the palace shook. Realizing his mistake, the calendar fled up the staircase, leaving his hatchet and shoes behind. The genie appeared, questioned the princess, and discovered the hatchet and shoes. Although the princess lied about their origin, the genie didn't believe her and attacked her. Hearing her screams, the calendar couldn't bear it and returned to the tailor's house. The next morning, the tailor informed him that an old man had come to return his hatchet and shoes. The calendar's face turned pale as the old man burst in, revealing himself as the genie. The genie seized him, flew through the air, and brought him back to the underground palace, where the princess lay injured. The genie asked her if the calendar was her lover, which she denied. The genie gave her a sword to kill him, but she refused, saying she couldn't kill a stranger who did nothing wrong to her. The genie then asked the calendar if he knew her, which he denied. The genie gave him the sword to kill her, but he too refused. Seeing their determination, the genie killed the princess and knocked the calendar unconscious. When he awoke, the calendar begged the genie to kill him, 
But the genie offered to spare his life if he chose to become a dog, an ass, a lion, or a bird. The calendar pleaded for his life to be spared or ended, but the genie turned him into a monkey and left him in a foreign land. The calendar descended a mountain to the seaside, where a merchant ship docked. The sailors initially tried to kill him, but the captain, impressed by the monkey's cleverness, took him as a pet. After a year of sailing, they landed in a city where the Sultan sought a successor for the Grand Vizier, renowned for his calligraphy. The Kalandar wrote a beautiful verse, impressing the Sultan. The Sultan invited him to the palace, where he further demonstrated his intelligence and skill by writing another verse and playing chess, winning two out of three games. The Sultan, intrigued, summoned his daughter, the princess, to see the clever monkey. When the princess arrived, she veiled herself and revealed that the monkey was actually a prince cursed by a genie. Her wet nurse, an accomplished mage, had taught her magic in her childhood. The sultan, surprised by his daughter's abilities, asked if she could restore him. She agreed, traced a circle on the ground, and summoned the genie in the form of a lion. A fierce battle ensued with the princess and the genie changing shapes multiple times. The genie hurled fire, but the princess caught him and fought back. The sultan's beard and garment were burned, the monkey lost an eye, and the eunuch was turned to cinders. Finally, the princess defeated the genie, who turned into a heap of ashes. She quickly asked for a glass of water, recited some words, and splashed it on the monkey, turning him back into a prince. However, the fire had burned her heart, and she soon died, turning to ashes beside the genie. The kingdom mourned her for seven days, building a grand sepulcher for her remains, while scattering the genie's ashes at sea. The sultan, grief-stricken, fell gravely ill, but eventually recovered. He summoned the Kalandar, saying he did not blame him, but asked him to leave the kingdom. The Kalandar shaved his head, donned the Kalandar robe, and traveled to the city of the Caliph, where he met the other Kalandars. After sharing his tale, the lady allowed him to stay and hear the next story.